if you are in the church and not, doesn't have that mindset that there is a battle going on, unseen battles going on, then I wonder what you would understand. There is a battle going on between the force of evil and good. And you can't claim ignorance. Ignorant, you can claim your tax return and claim everything you need to claim, but you, there are certain things you can't claim. And ignorance is one of them. There is a saying in law that ignorance is not an excuse. Even the Bible reminded us that we should not be ignorant of the devices. Don't be ignorant of the devices of the enemies. A pastor was saying something. He said that there is witchcraft in the church praise God he's a pastor well granted man of God and when I saw that I replied to him and I said to him that he didn't start from this generation witchcraft exists in the church right from time even before the church of Jesus Christ started and I said to him I said When you need to deal with a matter, don't go after Absalom. Go after Aitofel. When you crush the head of Aitofel, Absalom will be powerless. Just as if you need to kill the serpent, don't go for the tail. Go for the head. And the Bible made us understand and gave us clarity. It says, strike the shepherd. It said, the sheep will scatter. Whether be it godly or ungodly, there is something about the head. If the head is exposed, Before you realize what you're saying, you may be sharing the grace. That's why the head of every man is Christ. And as believers, we ought to protect our head. That's why the Bible talks about the helmet of what? Salvation. It is unlawful for a biker to ride the bike without the helmet, right? There is something about the head of every man. I am not here today to speak on the mystery of the head. So, that's a message for another day. Praise God. But I know that today God has mandated it that you will be blessed. That amen is not coming like you want to be blessed. I want to let you know that if the amen of your neighbor is higher than yours, you may be running risk. Praise God. When you shout amen and hit it hard, it's a sign I, by saying, I agree. I, it's confirmed. And I'm in agreement. Praise God. Let's bow our heads. Father Lord, I thank you. The hour has come that your name will be glorified. Lord, I pray that let the hearers today hear not my word, but your word. I pray, O oh Lord, Jehovah, that this atmosphere be sanctified with the blood of Jesus. Lord, I rebuke every spirit of sabotage. I decree, O oh Lord, Jehovah, that after this hour, after this moment, we will have a cause to come together and say, Thank you, Jesus, for that that you have done. For you have given us victory above all. Lord, we thank you. I say, may your name be glorified. For I vow to give you all the glory at all times in my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.
somebody turn your bible to the book of mark 11 as you turn your bible to the book of mark you'll be marked for success mark 11 mark 11 verse 23 mark 11 verse 23 for verily i say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall doubt not if the bible you have it's a uh, it's a it's a hard copy bible and not a borrowed one you can underline the word doubt and doubt not in his heart but shall believe that those things which he said underline shall come to pass and the bible said and uh, he shall receive whatsoever he has said he shall receive whatsoever he has said you know last week i was i believe i was talking about a renewing your mind praise god and today the lord is talking to us today how to receive your harvest abundantly how to receive your harvest abundantly you would agree with me that everything that connects us as believers is all about sowing and reaping from the beginning of uh, 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 mankind it has always been sowing and reaping the law of sowing and reaping is a law that will never go out of place or can never be outdated the bible say as the earth remained as long as the earth remains, it is a seed and harvest time shall not cease. Your harvest is a time of plenty. Your harvest is a time of after your struggles and your time of sowing and your labors and you are mandated to have harvest. When you don't have harvest after your labor, then something is definitely wrong. And we are going to be looking at this today and expatiating more on the word of God and understanding why many believers, you know, after the whole laboring and after the whole sowing, praise God, that they do, but they still have some kind of resistance or somehow, somehow, they don't experience harvest. Praise God. After sowing seeds, one of the things that you have to take note of is your utterance. Somebody say utterance. Your utterance, your words, what you say is the gateway to your harvest. If you take a look at that scripture, Mark 20, 11, 23, Jesus was saying categorically, and some of you, your Bibles is it marked our word is written on red, right? It that because Jesus is the one saying here, he said, Whatsoever, there is no limitation in God. Any limitation you experience is where your ability to believe God comes to an end. Until you come to a place where you know that your mind and everything about you cannot be limited then you will see things in supernatural and in greater extent in life Amen. elijah limited his, his ministry and his ministry never lasted long though very great impact but the ministry never lasted long imagine what elijah would have done and let it be noted also that elisha is older than elijah elisha lived a full-blown life but Elijah never lived long here on earth he failed in his ministry when you give up in whatsoever God has called you to do is a sign of failure and I've told you before now that that was why when Jesus was at the garden of Gethsemane the time of prayer when he went up with 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 Peter and the rest of them you know the two that came to him were the two ministers that failed the two prophets that failed to finish their assignment here on earth and that was uh, 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 Elijah and Moses praise God what you say is powerful what you say can destroy what you say can build what sayest thou what sayest thou what is it you're saying 
Many of us have used our mouth to destroy our harvest. You went on 30 days of prayers, and after the praying, you come out and you start cursing yourself out. You start laying heaps of, 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 of curses upon yourself. Know it that what you say with your mouth can bring your harvest or destroy your harvest. Number two, you must learn to say what is written and not what you are experiencing. The devil came against Jesus in the book of Luke at the top of the mountain and tempted Jesus. And all the time he approached Christ, Jesus said to him, it is what? Written. What was the experience of Jesus? Jesus was experiencing what I call the flesh reaction. He was hungry. And the Bible says it came to a time during the fast that he became so hungry and the devil came to him and said to him, if you be that great prophet, if you be the son of God, turn the stone to bread. Jesus said to him, it is what? Written. There is something about the word that is written. The Bible said the other day that when, you know, you know, Pilate had written and they mocked Jesus and did everything they did to him, they wrote on the crown, on the tongues on his head, king of the Jews, and, and, and placed that placard on the cross the king of the Jews. And certainly, even in death, they envied him. Even in death, they envied Jesus. And they came back and said to Pilate, listen, you got to remove that inscription there. It can't be king of the Jews. And Pilate said to them, what is written, is written. I pray for someone in this house today. Anything that is written over you and over your life and concerning your life, no man has the audacity to erase it. What is written concerning you shall not be erased in the name of Jesus. Everything about you and what you confess and say is based on what is written concerning you. What is written concerning you is your curriculum. Am I communicating with somebody? It's your vitae. It's your CV. Am I communicating? It is written concerning me. What is written is written. You can't erase it. Turn to your neighbor and say, you can't erase me. Ah, uh, no, no, no. I'm too rooted for you to uproot me. Hey! Kabbalah. There is something about the, 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 the cedar of Lebanon. You know, the cedar of Lebanon is, is a tree that produces good stuff. And uh, like it's used for many, many, many stuff. But it's something about that tree is that when you plant it it doesn't come out in the next season it takes its time to sprung out now even when it starts growing it doesn't grow much in the in the outskirts on, on the surface of the land but the tap root the root goes deeper than its tree itself that is how you are in Christ. When you are deep in God, you may not look in the outward like you are productive. Am I communicating? That's why the Bible says, no, no man according to the flesh. You may look at me and write me off. You, I may come to you, you may say, no, this is not the kind of pastor that will ever make it in Toronto. Am I talking to somebody? But there is something about what is written about me. Hey, I prophesy over you. Everything written about you must come to pass. Somebody say, I hear you. It must come to pass. And they couldn't do anything about it. 
that inscription remained there because if you violate it you have violated the stamp of Caesar and your head will pay for it so even the priest could not do anything about it hey I've come to prophesy to two persons no pastor shall be with you no pastor shall take away your blessings no pastor shall take away your place of glory somebody shall fire what God has put inside of you is inbuilt I'm not afraid of him that can kill the flesh but can't touch the soul ah I tell you what you say is powerful Amen. what God says is powerful Amen. so pastor connect this to what does it connect what does it mean what God says and what I say simple simple it's very simple the Bible said that we were made in the express image being expressed simply means that it is not a photocopy. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes. Praise God. I'm about to hit something now. This is a mystery that either takes people out of church or bring them in. It is not a photocopy. It is God manifesting himself from himself. You see, that was why there was a question. What is man that you are so mindful of him? Let me show you a mystery. When the Bible says, love your neighbor as you love yourself, it simply means that if you can't love your neighbor, it simply means that you can't love yourself. And it means that if you're able to love yourself, you'll be able to love your neighbor. Am I communicating? So, God so loved me that he became me and manifest on earth as divinity, putting on flesh. The John understood this mystery but find, found it somehow very challenging to interpret it. That was why John said, and the word became flesh and dwelled amongst men. Whatever that has been blindfolding you spiritually, may God cause that scale to fall off from your eyes. That's why I tell you, don't just know God because I spoke to you about God. Search the scriptures. Know God for yourself. When you, are, when you know God for yourself, you can't be tossed up and down by doctrines. Doctrines are not God made. Doctrines are man made. <laughs> the Bible said for the word of God and all this is given for the profiting, even for doctrine. So doctrine is man made institutional laws to guide the congregation in accordance to the word of God. But there are some doctrines that are, oh my God. There are some doctrines that are not, that are not word based. I call those kind of doctrines perverted truths. They look like truth, but it's not true. So many have put themselves in bondage because of what they say with their own mouth. Your, your, your mouth is your gateway. That's why the scripture says, tame your tongue. Tame it. Some of us are born again, but our tongues are not born again. Ah, some of us, we need some regenerational touch again. Not on our body this time, but on the tongue. The Bible says it's the smallest of the body, but so powerful than the whole member of the body. 
So stop talking about your experience. Nobody's asking, nobody's interested. And any, anytime you see anybody becoming too interested over your experience, check it, that person is a gossiper. They want to know about you so they can talk about you. So stop telling people your business. Keep that business, it's called business. Keep it to yourself. If you don't have spouse or, or husband or wife to talk to, talk to yourself. Hello? Yeah. Am I communicating with somebody? Yes. Stand before the mirror. After all, the Bible prescribed the mirror. It said we behold ourselves in the mirror, right? So behold yourself in the mirror and talk to yourself and breathe your mouth. What are you saying? Jesus never told the devil, you see, Satan? He answered, yes, Jesus. See, uh, it's true. What he said is true that I am hungry, right? Satan will say, yes. Yeah, so, uh, yes, I know, but I'm the son of God. Now you start explaining yourself. So you must learn to say what is written, Amen. not what your experience is saying. Some people say experience is the greatest teacher. Well done. Praise God. So for me to be great, I have to experience. There are, see, when you are in, when, in fact, when the Holy Spirit is in you, it makes you to be the person that has been in that field for many years. Do you know what it means to have the Holy Spirit back you up in anything? Oh, come on. The Bible said the other day that, that, that the Spirit, Jesus was saying that the Spirit, when it comes, it shall teach you all things and bring things to your remembrance. Are you aware that Jesus never went to school? But the Bible was written not by the hand of Christ, but by men that were inspired by the Holy Spirit. And this book, this book that you see today is the greatest attacked book in the world. It's the greatest, most persecuted book in the world. Yet it has outlived many. The written word of God. Somebody say, I hear, I hear you. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Joshua 1, verse 8. Joshua 1, verse 8. It says, this book of the law shall depart out of thy mouth. No, sir. Is that correct? No, sir. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Okay, you shall read it just in the morning alone. No, sir. Or only on Sunday when you get to church. The reason why you have refused to grow spiritually is because the only time you open the Bible or hear about the Bible or the scripture is when you come to church. Why won't you experience spiritual kashoko? Why won't you have spiritual epilepsy? You know spiritual epilepsy? Oh yeah. When somebody say, I want to pray, and the next day you see them, hey, in the name of Jesus, start sleeping. Another sign of spiritual epilepsy is when, when, you, when you open the Bible and say, today, today I want to read the Bible. I must study. Pastor told us that we must study the Bible. And you open the scripture. Huh? And fell down on the... And the whole saliva in your mouth will be wetting the Bible... You need a second baptism. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, your mouth. Those of you that when you sleep, you carry Bible, put on your chest. And when they ask you why, you say, you see, I do experience some demonic pressing at night. When I keep the Bible, when they come, they want to press me, they will see the Bible. Let me tell you. <laughs> 
You see this? You see this? It's not powerful. This is not powerful until you open your mouth and speak the word. So, Karen, there, there, there was a Bible I saw a taxi man putting in front of his, his car on the dashboard one day. I've never seen that kind of Bible before. Like it's, it contains even the things that Jesus doesn't even know. Very big. Very big. Like all my life, I've never seen that kind of book before. And I asked, What's that? He said, It's a Bible. I said, This is Bible. I said, Yes, ah, wonderful. I said, so why is it there? He said, you see, when I have this Bible here, ignorance speaking, when I have this Bible here, if there is any accident because this Bible is here, it won't happen. I say, you, in fact, for saying this, you will have one. <laughs> you see, those are people that are used to going to soothsayers. When they give them things, they now put their hope and their faith on those talisman. Those black magics. Preacher. That particular Bible will not save you. Thy word have I hid in my heart. That I will not sin against you. To stop fornication is not carrying Bible. When you see the gear, you now put Bible in between, in between you and the lady. I say, you see, as this Bible is here, mind your business. <laughs> Thy word have I hid in my heart that I will not sin against you. The reason why you struggle with sin is because the word of God is not in you. Is light to you. Is life to those that find them. Somebody was talking to me and said, I'm sorry. I said, you can't stop sinning by you say you want to stop sinning. You don't have the ability, the power. If you had the power to stop sinning, then Christ shouldn't have come to die for our sins. You don't have the power. It is the grace of God that gives you the ability to overcome sin. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate daring. Daring means in it. Don't meditate outside the word. Meditate daring day and what? You go to some of us, our offices, you see news magazines of different kinds, but you will never find any Christian literature around. You don't meditate. Praise God. They are not that thou mayest observe to do according until you meditate. You cannot observe that you are doing according to all that is written daring. Let me shock us. You see the word of God. If you carry this word put inside of you in greater measures, you can't be poor. I'm not joking. You see, being prosperous or becoming prosperous is not by God giving you prosperity. He has given you prosperity already. That's why he said that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then, for then thou shall make thy way. Not God making you. Mm -mm. Thou shall, you shall make your way prosperous and then you shall have what they call good success not bad success not bad success instead of me to have bad success I never I, I don't I, I rather don't have success at all God don't bless you and punish you at the same time no it, it's 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 a it's a great challenge when a man has been looking for money to become rich and he doesn't have it. And by the time he turns 80, 85, the whole teeth in his mouth is gone. Now, he now has money to eat. That kind of prosperity should not come to me. 
The prosperity I'm looking for should come now. Somebody say now. now. And the only way is by this word. Meditating on it. So stop talking poverty. Talk, talking poverty and you, you, you want to experience prosperity. It's not going to work. You know, I'm poor, a poor man like me. You know, people say that. They say, look at me, a poor fellow like me. You are cursing yourself. Stop it. That's why when, when so, so, there was a day somebody came and was like addressing everybody and, and I'm in their midst. And he said, you know, though he was trying to talk for our favor, but he now said, look at the poor people you are oppressing. I said, hey, hey, stop. Yes, Minus me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because you must learn to counter every evil world. Yes. Each time you keep silent is a sign that you have accepted. You are in agreement. I refuse it. I said to him, excuse me. Remove, delete this one you just said now. And he corrected himself. Praise God. Stop talking fear and expect to receive faith. I'm just so afraid of this whole situation. The pandemic. You know, science knows how to give big names that are very threatening to little things. Praise God. There are certain names when you hear them, scientific names, and you say, what is this thing? Can I see it? They will bring one little thing. They say, oh, this thing is the one that have this long, big name that involves Greek, Hebrew, and Aramic, even English, French, all together. Faith comment by what? And hearing the word, so it is also fear coming by word and hearing fear. Stop hanging around people that are very negative, negative individuals. Every morning they are calling you, hello, ring, ring, your phone piece and say, hey, how are you doing? Say, fine, ah, have you heard? What is the news? Ah, people caught about 600 have died in Toronto. Hey, what are we going to do? We are in for it. When you have those kind of talk, it weakens your faith and makes you become vulnerable. Yes, sir. Sure. Sure. Yes, sir. So you don't talk fear and expect harvest. Everybody was running out of the land. Isaac wanted to go. God said to him, no, remain in this land. And he obeyed God. Remain in that land, sold in that land. And in that same year, the Bible said he ripped in hundredfold in a place where nobody said nothing can come. In a place where everybody believed that nothing good can come out. I speak to you today. In that place where people say it's a dry land, I prophesy over you, you will be fruitful. In the name of Jesus. It will be fruitful. What you don't say, you will never see. <laughs> Everything. See, let me, let me say this. I'm going to be so rich. If you like, get angry with me. Praise God. No problem. But you see, me, I will be so rich that money will work for me. Amen. You don't want to say amen. Your amen won't bring it. It won't stop it. Praise God. I'm just letting you know that I'm speaking. Me as I am, so I'm speaking about my tomorrow. I'm shaping my destiny with the power of my mouth. Speaking it into existence. The Bible says speaking those things that are not as though they were. Praise God. You will never have a bank account that is not healthy. No, 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 no. When your bank account is experiencing support, oxygen, it's on oxygen. When you have healthy bank account, it's the type that the bank manager is, is the one that calls you every week. Say, hello, uh, Bishop Peters, uh, how you doing? 
say, do we fight? Um, have we been nice to you all this while? Yeah. You, you didn't say they did anything. But they just want to let you know that they love you. No, they don't love you. It's your money they love. <laughs> but the fact remains that there to be an outstanding person in the midst of all. It's not a crime. It's not a crime to be the best. It's not a crime to be rich as a believer. Not a crime. People, people tie p- poverty with Christianity. You know, these Christians, you know, they are poor. They're, they're, no, be an exceptional believer. Amen. Even at your workplace, be exceptional. In the midst of your peers, be exceptional. Amen. Let them have something to say about you. And you also have something good to say about yourself. Amen. I tell you, if you don't have money in your pocket, have mouth. Amen. Know how to talk. Somebody may defeat you, not because they have money more than you, but they know how to talk more than you. May the Lord anoint your tongue. Am I communicating with somebody? Proverbs 18.21. Proverbs 18.21. What you don't say, you will never have. Proverbs 18.21. Death and what? Are in the power of what? The same COVID-19 that many are surviving from, the same COVID-19 get a hold of some and they didn't make it. It's not because heaven wanted them to die. No, it's because they have accepted death from their heart. Your confession is as powerful as anything. You don't need to take pills and say, I want to take pills and commit suicide. No, you don't, you don't need to. That's you spending money to commit suicide. Or go and buy a gun and with some live ammunition. So you want to, you are stressing yourself. Just start, just open your mouth and start saying from now that by this time, in two weeks' time, I will be a dead person. Just start saying it. Praise God. May you not say it in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> then you will not know how powerful what you say is. As you start saying it, the whole, the whole element of death will be released on the person. And the fear of death will come upon the person. Death and life are in the power of all the tongue. And they that love it shall what eat the fruit thereof. Proverbs 12, 14. Proverbs 12, 14. See another scripture, Proverbs 12, 14. 12, 14. A man shall be what? Satisfied with what? With good by the fruit of what? His mouth. You will be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. And, 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 the, and, the comp- and a recompense of a man's hand shall be what? Rendered unto him. So when you speak good things about what you are doing, some of us, because we are experiencing some challenges we are cursing our job this nonsense and useless job that i have yes as you keep calling it nonsense and useless it will never be useful and the proceed that comes out of that job will never be useful praise god be careful what you say proverbs 13 verse 2 proverbs 13 verse 2 proverbs 13 2 proverbs 13 2 he said, a man shall eat good by the word fruit of his word mouth, but the soul of the trans- transgressors shall what eat what violence. The fruit of his mouth. What's that fruit? What you say. What you say. The book of Proverbs 6 2, I believe, said, Thou art enslaved by the words of thy mouth. You are enslaved by what you say. They say, oh, do you know you can be the next mayor in the town? Hey, you will laugh. What are you laughing? You're laughing yourself. Ha, 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 ha. Hey, who dash monkey banana? <laughs> Let's go. You know what that means? Uh, okay. 
<laughs> monkey loves banana, right? So the best food for monkey is banana. So they are trying to say that <laughs> the banana is not easy now for monkey to eat. That's for them to become the mayor of the town is not going to be easy. That is not possible. Because nobody normally goes to give monkey a free banana. It's either the monkey will accept to enter into slavery and be taking banana. But if they are free, they can't have it. Be careful what you say. Am I communicating with somebody? I've given you some bullets this morning. Hear me. When a person is shot, have you wondered why when the bullet hit them and they are not aware they've been hit, they keep running as much as they want? But immediately somebody just say, hey, look at, you say, what? You say, look at your back. You say, turn and say, this is blood, 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 blood. And you touch, you say, ah, blood. Hey, I'm, I'm shot, I'm shot, I'm shot, I'm shot, I'm shot. <laughs> Death has come. That's why you must not be too conscious of negative news. Don't even be conscious about it. I said, I'm so. If you're a negative person, you call me and you give me bad news, bad news, bad. There is nothing different between you and CNN. You know the meaning of CNN? Constant negative news. They never give you anything good. Have you heard? Tornado. Have you heard? But people are doing things great. They don't carry the news. Great things are happening in the community where CNN found themselves, their headquarters. They don't carry it. When a news station has turned around to become gossipers, there is no need to listen to them. If you want to live healthy, don't listen to CNN before you go to bed. Or else you will have horrible, horrible dreams. Proverbs 18, 20. Proverbs 18, 20. And God help us. A man's belly shall be what? Satisfied with what? Talk to me. With what? With the fruit of his mouth. And with what? The increase of what? So you have to learn to speak positively in increased measure. When I stand here, I say the Dynamis Palace shall be a ministry that many, it will be like a club site. Yes, sir. If they ask you, are you a member of the Dynamis Palace? You say no, they say, oh, you are not, you are not, you are not, you are not, you are not current. This ministry. Watch. Praise God. God showed me so great things. The music ministry was something else. Have their own studio. So, if, if you are playing for the Dynamics Palace by then, you see, vision is so powerful. When people are not able to see the, what you're seeing, it's difficult for them to blend it into what you're doing. But you know, nobody forces you to see. Seeing is your responsibility. Not the pastor's responsibility. Uh, God does not force vision on people. No. He, he, he asks them, what can you see? Uh, am I communicating? Oh yeah. He asks Jeremiah, what seest thou? Jeremiah say, I see an almond tree. He say, good. Thou hast well seen. Not what I have seen. No, he said, but this thing that you, Jeremiah, have seen, I, the Lord, will bring it to pass. So what you are able to see is what God will give to you. So if you see, as a single lady, you see a husband that is very irresponsible, you will have it. You see a woman that is very irresponsible, you will have it. But if you see yourself, chat your course. Speak to your aeon. Aeon is the Greek word for your word. Speak to your word. Build it with the power of your mouth. Tell yourself, I will be outstanding in life. I, don't, I didn't just arrive where I am today as a pastor. No, from childhood. 
started talking. Started talking. Started talking. Started talking. When I talk sometimes, people will mock me. Hey, you say you. <laughs> you know what they will do? They will first of all want to remind you of your family. They will say, have you forgotten where you come from? Who your father is? Who your mother is? Didn't they call Jesus the son of the carpenter? The son of the carpenter today has turned around to become the Messiah of the whole world. Undeniable. May you reign. That amen is not strong enough. Praise God. Psalm, Psalm 34. Let me run very fast. Psalm 34 verse 12 to 13. Psalm 34 verse 12 to 13. Psalm 34. Psalm 34. 12 to 13. What man is he, is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? What kind of man is that? Verse 13. Keep thy tongue from what? Evil. That's all. You want to see good? Keep that little thing in your mouth from evil. Amen. Praise God. Do you know that the tongue has eyes? Oh, you don't know? Uh, yeah, science, I don't know why. The, the tongue is the most active member of your body. That even when you want to, for, for something to clip the tongue, is very difficult. Tongue runs inside, yeah. comes out. Do you want to, and it goes inside back again. Aha. The tongue is very smart. That's why when people want to lie, they lie with their tongue. When they want to bless, they bless with their tongue. When they want to curse, they curse with their tongue. So the tongue is used for everything, even to eat, and everything you will do, the tongue. Or that smart area, and which is a sensitive area in the part of humans, praise God, spiritually, is the eyes. These things, what you say, what you see, these are entrant points to your body. Yeah. The eyes is very smart. If I do like this now, is it closing? If I do like this now, I want to, don't be, yeah, see, it's blinking. Yeah. Even when I put my hands, I say I want to, I will blink. Why? Because their eyes is sensitive. Praise God. So, 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 so keep thy tongue from evil. The same tongue you use and say, Father, bless me. The same tongue you use also to criticize your brother, to criticize your sister, to attack people. When somebody hear you talk, they say, Dear Jesus, I thought you were born again. You say, Leave that thing. When somebody make you angry, you say, Listen, you think because I'm a churchgoer, you want to try me. Watch. They will close their Bible, keep the Bible one side, and take off their tie. Take off their suit. See, my head is not right to. I'm not a normal human being. <laughs> I'm not normal. So don't just think that because I'm a Christian, you want to ride me. You need to be born again. You're far from God. Stop yourself from speaking in agreements to diseases, poverty, and defeat. Amen. Don't accept those things. You create what your harvest should, should be like. Praise God. By the words of your mouth. Hebrews 11 verse 3. Hebrews 11 verse 3. You create it by the words of your mouth. How your harvest should look like. Me, my harvest, even on my family and my ministry and myself. Oh my God. My harvest is going to be mighty, plenteous on the earth. Praise God. Let me tell you something before we read that scripture. A successful man is not the man that has 10 billion in his account today. Being successful is your ability to have transgenerational wealth. What did I say? Trans what? Say it. Trans what? Transgenerational wealth and have also having the ability to affect lives. How many persons you have affected positively determines how successful you are. 
So owning big houses and big bank accounts, fat bank accounts, and doing nothing with it does not make you a successful man. Through faith, we understand that the world were framed by what? The word of what? Of who? Of God. So that things which are not seen. So when I tell you, I say, oh, I'm going to be the great man with so much money. Are you seeing money now? Uh, if you even go to my bank account and apply, you may not see one. Praise God. But I'm speaking what is not now as it is. When God came and saw darkness, he didn't let it be that way. The Bible says he spoke. Let there be light. And there was light. So if you are the express image of Elohim, ah, you have the ability to create speak things that are not command them to come into existence and the way 2000 and, uh, 2012 a lady came to me and said that she has written exams and um she has not been able to make that particular cutoff mark to get into school because there is a particular exam you have to write back home in Nigeria for you to get into school. It's called JAM. Praise God. And she said she came to one of our conferences and she made a vow to God and placed her seed on the altar without telling anybody. She went back. She wrote that exam. And suddenly... Every other person's name came out. Her name, her number was mysteriously missing from the system. And as long as your name is not in that system, you can't get into school. Now she started weeping, told her mom and said she's confused. Now that she knows that God has answered her, how come her result is not out? And they said she has gone to the uh, office and they said they can't trace her in that system. So she said she went back with her mother to the school office and they opened the system, asked her, said, maybe we are not seeing well. Please show us your name here and your number, your graduation number. She said she can't see it. When she came to the church, after service, they came to see me. And when she told me, this is it, I said to her, I said, go back. Don't start confessing that your name is not there. Your name is there. She said, Pastor, so what should I say? Go back. Go, go back to the system. Your name will be there. You don't need to talk much about it. She went back instantly in faith. Went back to that place. Boom. Her name came out as the third person amongst hundred and something persons. Appeared as the third. So if it is the third all this while, you can't miss one, two, three. Even though your eyes is getting dim. God supernaturally slotted her in. I pray for you that you will receive a slot. That amen is poor. Let that same miracle come upon you in the name of Jesus. Through faith, we understand. Through faith, we understand. Through faith, we understand that the world were free by the word of God. He speaks those things that, that are not as though they were. And they did appear. Hallelujah. After this season, great testimony will hit you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Don't destroy your harvest with your mouth. Amen. You don't say it or confess it when you get it. No. It's not when you get it, it's start confessing. Oh, like if you have 10,000 in your account now, you're confessing. Hey! I will have 10,000 my car. Is that a confession? No, that's not a confession. You don't say it when you have it. You say it to get it. Amen. Praise God. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 6. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 6. Praise God. You don't, you don't, you don't just say it because you have it already. 
Praise God. You are speaking what is not there at all. That is a testimony. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy what flesh to do what? To sin. Your mouth can cause the flesh to sin. Neither said thou before the angel that it was an error. Praise God. Therefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thy hands. Mouth. May God never let you destroy what you have built all these years with just one silly word. Proverbs 18, 21, finally. Your tongue has the ability to destroy you and make you. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are what? In the power of what? That's it. When you get back, you read the book of 1 Samuel 17. Read the whole of that story. David and Goliath. Have you noticed that before David engaged Goliath in that battle, he used his mouth to finish Goliath? <laughs> Every defeat you must experience must come first from... Uh, you uncircumcised Philistines. He made Goliath believe that if you are not a believer, you have no audacity to speak and your head can be cut off. So when he confessed those words... Heaven backed him up. When you confess negatively, heaven will step out. But when you confess positively, God will back you up. That's why you will never hear me speak negatively. No, we are go-getters. Whatever God has given to you, you will get it. In the name of Jesus, rise up to your feet. Lord, help me to talk right. Open your mouth and start praying for yourself. Father, in the name of Jesus, grant me the grace and ability to talk right. May I know how to talk. May I speak words of life. In the name of Jesus, grace, O oh Lord, and power. Zatabale to shatagabaha. Somebody is not praying. Open that mouth and speak. Lord, heal my tongue. In the name of Jesus, every curse I've placed upon myself, Lord, I pray for deliverance. I pray, oh Lord Jehovah, that I be delivered. In Jesus' name we pray. Hear me. Even as we pray, hear me. Hear me. Do you know that there are some ladies that have used their mouth to destroy their husband? There are some parents that have used their mouth to destroy their children. Each time you call your kids, you big-headed boy, very soon, cancer or brain tumor is on the way. If you are a person of authority, being parent, grandparent, or whoever you are, be careful what you say with your mouth. There are some youths today, their life is useless, not because it's destined to be so. No, because their parents have used their mouth to curse them. There are these two individuals on earth that you must be very careful with. That have the ability to say things and it will start just happening. These are parents, biological parents and spiritual parents. If they say it, that's it. That's why we must be careful what we say. Even if you were angry as a parent, don't curse your child. A boy was so frustrated that he was weeping and crying. That my mom, I have, oh, I've always known my mom cursing me when I was little. She called me names and look at me today. I didn't amount to anything. 
here he is, 40 something years old. Yet he has not left the house of his father and mother. He's still with them. And the mother now is old. Now she's reaping what she has sown with her mouth. She's crying on behalf of the, the young man. But she did it. So we are going to pray. Father, in the place of curse, we bless. Open your mouth and start speaking blessing to your wife. Speak blessings to your father, to your, to your, to your husband rather. Speak blessings to your children. Open your mouth and start prophesying blessings. Wherever they are, let them be blessed. Lord, I remove every, every limitation. I remove by the order of heaven. In the name of Jesus, I command limitation be removed. I command stumbling blocks be removed by fire. Sete braka debo shata baha. Zebra hen deraboska. Zeti braha tuske te braka te. Zeske braka te. Shipra gos kade kadebo shata baha. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. One more. One more prayer point. There are some of us, our parents, either they are old or they are aged or whatever. Some are passed on. Some of them have not come into the light to understand what you understand now. And paraventure, they have spoken words out of anger in the past. Some of them you can remember, some you can't remember. When Reuben sinned against his father, the Bible said his father cursed him and said, Unstable as water, you will never excel. That is the worst curse I've ever heard in the scriptures. You know, water is never stable. And down the line in his generation, a man named Moses, a prophet, came into the sea. And the Bible said that when, they, when, 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 when Moses was getting ready to depart he called for the 12th tribe of Israel but do you know that when that cross was placed upon him the Reuben never experienced any unstableness it's his generation they started experiencing untimely death people were dying from the tribe of Reuben young stars and suddenly and Reuben also was the first son. And Moses said, Call the twelfth tribe. And the twelfth tribe came. When they came, he looked at Reuben. He said, Let Reuben be blessed. And let not his men be few. From that day, the curse was broken. I come today as a commander of liberation. I prophesy over your life every curse upon you by whoever in the name of Jesus is broken. It's broken. Every curse upon you, every curse upon your life, unstable activities instability in your family instability in your marriage instability in your job by the divine authority I cause you to be liberated liberation locate you locate your household locate your children 
locate you wherever you are in the name of Jesus hear me words are powerful when spoken they are like bullets they don't come back and each time a word is spoken the sun and the moon and all the firmaments and the elements of this earth they hack into it and they walk towards it by that same order I come today as a prophet I decree let the elements of this earth walk for your sake let the sun favor you for the sun shall not smite thee by day neither the moon by night I prophesy over you with my head lifted up so shall your head be lifted up somebody shout and receive it Lift up those hands and worship God. Go ahead, go ahead, worship God. Worship God, wherever you are. The curse is broken. The limitation is removed. Hey, Zate Braha do Shedeke Braha. Koskita brahos kida bosha, zete krosa da baha, shira da balosi kete begete, eku paroski wata prakate, limbra do sete gregete gregete gregete, pelekete brekete braha zada baha, shite breketo zada gada balekete, zeka ta prakosha ta kapaka. I break the curse. I break the limitation. I remove the stumbling block. Hey! Zeta kapa ne braha soshkete. Si brekete broko do fedegedege. Zeke deke 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 deke. Shete breko zeke gata balakadeya. Let the sun work for your favor. Let the moon work for your favor. Let the earth favor you. In the name of Jesus. Zeke washa. Go si broko do. In the name of Jesus. From today, nobody will die premature in your family. In the name of Jesus. From today, the curse of limitation has been broken. In the name of Jesus. From today, every stumbling block in your family, life, ministry has been rolled away in the name of Jesus. Wave those hands to him. Give him praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. Holy Ghost! Yes, 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 Sikoto prakate satabosh. Woo! Hallelujah! Glory to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Wave those hands to Him. Give him thanks. You 
deserve the glory. for what he has done. Sing you deserve, you deserve the glory and the honor. And the the service you will walk out here as kings and queens you will never appear beggarly anymore may my God give you bread may you have seed everything that is about May it locate you this week. Your week is filled with testimony. That phone call you've been expecting in the name of Jesus. Let that call come. 
before 12 noon Monday in the name of Jesus every delayed testimony may you have it now in Jesus name you will never be a destitute there will be no mess in your in your in your life every error is turned around to be a miracle thank you holy spirit jesus name